going on guys? It's your boy Sizzle Games a video here today bring us a brand new video creating your very own cool 2021 clean eSport design something along those lines now if you guys look at my example here I think it's actually pretty freaking dope I want to just give you guys a really cool bare-bone idea of just like trying to strip down all this the the almost the chemicals all like the textures the flattering flares and blah 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 right and just bring you guys to a very simple thing that hopefully can break down and give you guys an idea for when you want to move into the esports scene and or are in the esports scene just looking to make yourself and or team a really cool header design so i think right here what i have is actually pretty cool so realistically i just basically kind of cut it in into like almost two different areas or three technically right where you have the main this is the team logo right and then you have a character over here also sitting behind the actual player in this case myself in a picture and then you have this really cool lockup of text here and you have all this white space where you can do either anything you want or leave it as clean as you guys see it here which i think it looks super super clean right i have a different lockup by the way i have this one here this one right here which is also super clean as well and something like this right so all different kind of things and also i have another example as well which is more just sort of like a, a red example here so you can see of course it's just color change you do a few color change i put a simple texture in the red here uh not being pure white right i made this black and white not a color and made the actual render uh have like a nice cool red tint you can tell and see how you're going to manipulate this kind of idea and this kind of setup into many different things and hopefully find something you really like to do. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it really, really easy, really quickly. And let's just get this thing going. So if you guys like the video, if you guys do enjoy the video, excuse me, leave a like on the video. And uh, that's it. Also, I have some fire, fire videos coming and very, very soon. However, they take a little bit of time. So just know they're coming. Just saying. All right, so let's get this thing going right here, right now. So over, over here, over, over here, okay? All my documents, I have the pictures that I'm going to be using for today's video, which is myself of the picture or the player in this case, right? Or yourself, right? Right, then I have my logo here as well. Then I have a cool background image of whatever game the pro player is playing and or myself and or just my favorite game right now, Valorant, right? So if you guys want to go ahead and just get those three pictures going for yourself, so a picture of yourself, your logo or your team logo, and then a picture of a cool game character of the game that you main or play or play professionally, right? So I'm going to do over here is i'm gonna go back over here let's bring this uh black background in i'm also gonna bring in the picture of myself just like so now a few things to really quickly mention is i'm not gonna make myself super small like right here right now if i were to imagine myself being cut out uh you're only realistically using right about this much of all this space that should be kind of utilized for the actual player person and the render right so i'm gonna make sure i make myself a bit bigger than that so it's almost like covering up more real estate right so i'm gonna do take myself control t make this a lot bigger right just see my chest really kind of just more like that right and i would say that's a pretty good size of myself being really up taking up a lot of space right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna click on my layer i'm gonna go to where it says i'm gonna press w my keyboard actually right which brings up the magic wand tool and stuff like that but realistically the reason why i'm gonna press w on our keyboard is it gives us the option to select the subject that's exactly what we're gonna do so select subject does is takes whatever is in focus and cuts it out and basically makes a marquee tool selection for you um almost like as if you pen tooled out everything that was in focus anyway right so with this i can then go ahead and go to layer mask right here and just simply click on the layer mask just like so and you'll now notice that things are being cut out which is pretty cool pretty simple and hopefully if you have a nice clean picture that's also in focus whether if you did with a professional camera or just like you were in focus it should cut it out pretty well otherwise with the pen tool by the way but hey it works so one thing i want to also bring to you guys uh the to your attention is if you guys did not know if this is not here for you right if you double click on the actual layer mask itself it should bring up the properties table as you guys see right here and now if you guys select select and a mask this will also bring up more options within your select mask that you just made just now so what i mean by that is hey let's say if you see like a little bit too much like white going on in the areas on the outsides you can take the shift edge and move this to the left you can see the red and how it's kind of like fixing that so that's exactly what you can do here. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because we're going to show you something else as well. But I will say around negative 15 is a pretty good spot to just leave it for now. But I'm just basically making it so that kind of like the pixels and the outside edges that are white basically go away. Right. And I also noticed that there's probably a little bit of how do you say feathering going on here. So I'm going to take the contrast and what contrast basically does is really makes the, the edges hard, basically. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and just click them. Uh, just click them click it and move it up to about 20% or so and I'll say that's a pretty good size to go for then if you want to take the smooth this as well it works a lot for me where like when I use game character stuff so I'm not gonna use it for when I use my hair and stuff like that because my hair is kind of crazy but hey it works if you want to put your smoothness up as well i would also recommend it for you now the last thing i also want to show you guys is is this second tool right here i don't know the actual name of it sometimes it just pops up sometimes it doesn't but regardless the second tool the front edge brush tool if you use this tool the second tool right and you click on a color right in this case i'm gonna click on the green 
any color that, or basically when you move your mouse now, any color that was that color will also now disappear. It's a really cool thing to use when you want to cut out hair. And a lot of times when you're cutting out players and stuff for eSports teams, you're going to be cutting out a lot of hair. Unfortunately, you got to learn how to cut it out just a little bit, right? So now that I've done that, it looks pretty good, pretty clean. If I want to go over here and say, hey, the white, I don't want the white here either. Let's go uh, get rid of that as well. Hey, this darker green here. All right, it didn't work that time, but hey, you guys can see how it works. I would highly advise you guys to definitely try it out yourselves. But now that I have that done, I'll press OK. Now, if I bring the copy over of what it used to, what it looks like that, what it used to look like before, right? You get something like this, right? You see how all that green is kind of gone. It's still there a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys one more thing to do, but also you even see this little outside edge here. If you want to fix that as well, you can also go to your layer here, right? This is my copy, by the way. Don't worry about it. But go to your actual layer, your picture layer, right? We're gonna go to where it says layer, matting, and then defringe. Right, I'm gonna defringe it by about two pixels, and you can see if you look right here, right now, when I press OK, all that kind of white should also go away. And now, did it go away? It didn't do it as much as I would like it to, to be honest with you. Oh, oh, also, I forgot. I don't think you can layer matting defringe if you have a layer mask, I almost forgot about that, but if you wanna right click, convert to smart object, make a duplicate of that picture copy, right? Now I'm gonna also just make sure I rasterize this layer. So of course I made a copy and duplicate just in case I need to go back on it. But now that the layer has no layer mask, now I can go to where it says image and I can go to where it says, not the image, layer, matting, defringe, just defringe about two or three pixels, I'm gonna say three, right? Now that I do it, it gets rid of the color or the sort of like weird white banding wash that's happening there and gets rid of it. If you of course have to go into it again, you can put on your layer mask once again, take your brush and just go into it and use a black brush to get rid of all that kind of like um, unwanted basically glow, right? But also you can see there's still a little bit of green in my hair. All I can do here is make a new layer, clip mask that new layer to that uh, picture layer. Basically use a brush, a soft brush, Hold Alt on your keyboard, it brings up the eyedropper tool when you have the brush up uh, on your actual screen right now, right? You click somewhere with the color of your hair, you click and just go over it just like so, over that color that might still be in there, right? Then I'm gonna go to where it says image or uh, normal, and I'm gonna go to where it says color, and boom, now you gotta have your hair, uh, hair looking pretty good, pretty solid, I can also get rid of this copy. And now we can make our way on to doing the other part, which is taking our logo in here, right? I'm gonna take my logo, make this a nice white so you guys can actually see it. Make it pretty big now if you don't have a logo of a team logo or anything like that you can also just use an actual picture of not a picture but a text right you can use a text as well same exact way i'm doing it just make the text really really big and uh, whether if it's a cool brush text as well can also give you an entirely different new idea so now that i have this going on here right we got our logo looking pretty nice right behind us right there dope what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna take the actual picture over here of the uh uh how do you say viper right let me put this below everything Right, I don't need this picture either. Oh, that's our backup, so we'll leave that for now. But, right, we take this, I'm gonna flip this because I want her looking the opposite way. Now, with this picture here, right, I can go ahead and say, hey, let's cut out Viper really quick, so I'm gonna do that, same exact thing. Select subject, see if it works. It works pretty well, but if you wanna go into the actual edit mode of select subject before you cut it out officially, you can press Q on your keyboard, use a brush, right, and use a white and black brush, basically black, uh, will, e will basically fill in and white will also erase. So white right now is erasing. So I'm gonna go through all this kind of stuff right here, right, by going back and forth with my uh, X tool, by the way, to switch between my colors of black and white, you can see here, right? So if, I, if I'm not erasing it, I'll just press X, just like so, and I'll erase it just like that. So I'm gonna get rid of all this around here. And basically what's happening is, is whatever is red is actually being cut out. So I just go through all this, make sure it's all, you know, nice and, uh, how do you say, you know, filled in. Perfect, now that I actually have it all cut out or and or kind of filled in, right? Now I can use my layer mask just like so and have this putting right behind myself just like that and uh, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna take this out. Oh, let me also just make sure I don't uh, click on anything over here. Take this, right, move this over just a little bit. Now I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I can use either a different picture or whatever, but I'm actually, I wanna take the same exact scene, right? I'm gonna make a duplicate of this layer by holding it or clicking on it, pressing Alt, dragging it below it, that'll make a nice copy for me. I can click back on the layer mask and fill everything back in really quickly by just pressing Alt backspace. If it doesn't work, that means it erased everything. So you wanna press Control backspace, that'll fill it all back in, just like so, right? Then I can move this to a different area, right? I don't have to have her in the picture. Then I'll have this image here, clipping mask to my logo right in the background. I can make this a little more bigger so you don't really see her, right? Just like so. Right now at this image here, I can either use a cool uh, gradient. So for my gradients, I'm gonna show you guys one really quickly, right? Clip mask this as well. With my gradients, I can either use a really cool one like this where it's like super kind of like 
fun, abstract, crazy, and weird. And to get this kind of color scheme right here, what you want to do is have a black on the left hand side. Then you want to basically go around a quarter of the way, right? And then you want to use a pink or whatever color of your choice in this case, right? Then right next to it, basically like just very, very simply you know, really close to it. You want to do another color where there's a teal, which would be your second color in there, right? Or whatever bluish kind of tone you want to do, whatever color you want to choose, right? Then after that, just a little more space in between, right? You have a gray, just like so, right? 9F, 9F, 9F. And on the far right hand side, you have a pure white. Now for your midpoints, you want to have, make sure this is more close to the gray area here. This one's in the middle. This one is in the middle. And this one is also a little more closer to the red area there as well. Now play with your midpoints. If you're not getting enough shadow to color ratio, which means basically take this, move this over to the right, move this over to the left. If you guys need to right? same thing with this over here, right? Same thing with this over here as well. Play with your midpoints. It's going to really help you out with your other gradient work, but I'm going to press okay. Also, if you don't want a full on gradient like this, you can also do something where it's more like a single color right here, where you just basically change that pink one or that second color one with a gray. So really let's honestly looks super freaking cool. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to do right another layer right above the background layer. I'm going to do a quick little pen tool, right? And I want to fill off this right hand side, right? Press control enter to make a select subject of it. Pure white just like so right now i have a pure white as this kind of like cut and i have this over here staying a different color i can make it black i make it green i can move it every color i want to but really i'm gonna leave it black and white for now but also i can make her as well a different color but i think it's cool if i just leave her a color have the color kind of like match here which looks pretty cool as well just making it a little more different from the uh, from before but i can then go ahead and just type my name in sesso right just like so boom right i'll have sesso here i'll have my logo once again kind of being placed just like so right above it, right? Then on all the information I probably end up putting in here is, hey, what play, what do I play, right? So I'm gonna say, hey, Valorant, uh, professional player. Let's see if I spelled it right, right? Let's just like a drum roll real quick. Also before that, I'm just gonna kind of go over here and change this subtext to a different color or a different font, excuse me. I'm gonna use a Rame this time, right? Just like so, did I spell it right? I can't tell, like, can I just type it in again? I'm like, I missed it. I missed the S, didn't I? Yo, let's go. I fixed it, right? Yo, also edit. Yo, I'm gonna change your life. You don't know this yet. Edit, check for spelling, professional. Wait, what? What did, how did I spell it? Oh, I forgot the N. A, I, mm -mm. but that's what spell check is for, Tana. All the things I'm basically using in today's video is all the things I pretty much do every single day. So with that being said, we have that right here. We're looking pretty good. I want to change the S and the O just in my name to a different color. Maybe something that of course is already inside the banner. In this case, this green. Hey, I'm going to make it match. Look pretty cool, right? Now that I have this, if you guys ever use sponsors in your, in your banner design, right? Your header design. Keep in mind, if you're ever doing a sponsor, uh, excuse me, a header design for another player who's probably more popular than you or whatever, right? Or whatever case, they have like 100K, you know, they're in a main team and they have sponsors to work with. Two things not to do, right? Don't ever change the actual size, or excuse me, don't ever change the color of the actual sponsor logo itself, right? Keep it the main color. Also, there is usually black and white different alternatives, but don't go changing like a uh, a Red Bull logo to blue, right? That doesn't make any sense. That won't be very happy with the sponsor themselves. And most likely nine, actually a hundred percent of the time, you will probably not get the header used simply because your sponsors are also wrong. Second thing is use and make sure all the sponsors are on the same playing field. If you have a lot of sponsors. So in this case right here, right? I'm gonna go over here really quick for you. In this case right here, you can see that there is no sponsor logos that are on here that are bigger than the one to the left or right hand side of it because they're all on the same real estate, on the same playing field and all paid most likely, if not the same amount of prices, regardless, this, they, they paid to be on the header. You want to make sure that they're all the same size. That's another thing that's really, really important as well. Now, with that being said, if you have those sponsor logos, you can put them down just like here, like you have here. Otherwise, you don't have to do head, you don't have to do so. But if you do have any sponsor logos, you just, you know, put them right, you know, below there, call it a day, right? Now, another thing you can do, you can take this left hand side, which is basically a background right now, which is pure black, make a new layer above it and say, hey, I want this to be a secondary color or green, right? Take this, and make it green. That looks pretty cool. It's not my favorite because there's not enough contrast going on here. I think the black works a lot. If you want to take this green, does that work? I mean, no, but right. If you want to, I would just change the color as well. If you guys wish to also change the main color of this as well. You guys saw the examples that I showed in the beginning of the video, right? So all those different things you can end up doing for yourselves and really helping yourselves out. One last thing I'm going to show you guys is, is on your actual picture here. I want to show you guys that makes a really cool kind of like epic look, right? So I'm going to right click and basically smart object, this layer here, which is my picture layer. I'm going to filter 
camera raw filter. Now in this, I'm gonna go ahead and go to where it says basic. I'm gonna put this on this little uh, button right here, selects between before and after, right? I'm gonna take my texture and put this up quite a bit. Makes my hair look pretty good, right? We'll put the clarity up just a little bit as well. Put the whites up a little bit to help my skin out a little bit more. Take the shadows, it'll help the creases and things in my sweater and whatnot look more kind of realistic and come out a lot more, right? I can take my detail if I wish to. I'm not gonna go too crazy with the sharpening. You can see what happens when you go too crazy. You can put the sharpening up just a little bit just to get the eye sockets and or anything to look more sharper, right? Noise reduction if you want to put a little bit on, but color noise or color reduction is actually pretty you know, good in this case, but be careful uh, if you put this too high, it'll actually change your color of your like your eyes and things like that. So be careful with that. But besides that, now it looks pretty good here. I wanna go to where it says color mix, right? Take the saturation of the blue. My shirt or my sweater is basically black, but there is a blue tint to it because of the color correction from before. I wanna take that saturation, take the blue, bring it nice and down to black. Looks really, uh, really good now. And I'm also gonna say, hey, my skin, I wanna bring this up a little bit more to make my skin a little more brighter. I'm kinda like, hey, I'm like, it's, you know, I got a little more clear skin. It's a little bit too dark in this room, right? Press okay. Now, if I come out of it, you can see it looks pretty freaking dope. It just makes you look a little more cooler, a little more epic, I can say. But you can see if I just erase around where it was before, you can see that was blue. You can see how all the increase of the kind of saturations help out as well. I kind of go overboard with it, but if you want to lower the actual clarity down a little more, I'm not clarity, texture down a little more, also a pretty good idea for you guys. But realistically, with that being said, right, we are pretty much done. And that is how I make myself some pretty cool looking headers and like the the ideas the basics and the things how i cut things out how i like to separate and or excuse me put things in sec uh put things in the actual header english is just not my first language anymore bro i swear um but hey with that being said today's video is now done it's now finuto if you guys enjoyed today's video if you learned something hopefully you learn how to cut things out now hopefully you learn how to at least place things as well hopefully you learn a little about sponsor logos hopefully you learn a little about gradients gradients are fun gradients are my favorite things in the universe so with that being said, I'll talk to you guys later. Senso HQ out. You have to get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking ready, guys. Later. Much love. And uh, yeah, go make yourself some pretty clean headers. Don't gotta go crazy. You take what you have and you see here, you're like, hey, Senso, it looks kind of like, you know, too easy or whatever, right? Which you wanna sprite, you know, you wanna spruce it up. You take the white back and you make it a, a new color. You put a texture on it. You can do whatever the heck you guys want with this after this. But basically, this is going to be a very nice foundation for you guys moving forward. And uh, yeah, that's it. Enjoy yourselves. Peace.